to commend our main speaker, the Honorable Isaac Adongo. Indeed, Isaac raised very important point, and it's important for us to discuss them in detail. Colleagues, panelists, um, I wish to say that, unfortunately, the way this administration is trying to manage this economy, unfortunately, they are permanently trapping us within the spirit of populism and lies. And Your Excellency, let me say that your next administration will have a lot of work to do. We will need to reset the entire fiscal framework, reset the entire monetary framework before we can roll out our policies. I recommend that your team start immediately to work because indeed the way this administration is trying to manage this economy is not the best and they will, we will end up destroying the fundamentals of the economy. But let me say that my presentation today will be very brief. I will touch on some of the things that Isaac has discussed and delve a bit deeper into what some of the things Isaac has talked about. I will spend about two minutes to talk about the exchange rate and show the same slides and some more of what Honorable Isaac Adonko talked about. I will then move on and talk about the facts versus the lies. And colleagues, you recall that when the Vice President was speaking, he said, you can hold me accountable to any data that you disagree. Today, my job here is to hold him accountable to the data. And um, I will prove to you that our Vice President is a liar and has been lying to us. So that is what I will do. And then finally, I will delve on to some of the deceptions that we've been seeing and the populism, some of the populist policies that are being implemented and they'll continue to implement them. So Mr. Um, can you please um, show the slides, please? Let me take you to the slides. Um, move on to Honorable Isaac, delve a bit on this slide. And you will notice that as if you are to compare 20 countries or all the countries in Africa, you see Ghana at the bottom in terms of our currency, showing clearly, and this is coming from the Bloomberg terminal. Those who have access to Bloomberg terminal can verify this data. Ghana happens to be the worst or the cheapest currency ever in Africa. In fact, um, this is information from Bloomberg terminal for the year to date. So you don't see that as a good picture at all. Again, yesterday I heard His Excellency the Vice President talk about the fact that the city has depreciated only about 5% in the first three months of the year. I beg to say that that is a lie. That is a lie. And this is coming from Bloomberg Terminal. Let me show you something. On the Bloomberg Terminal, you will notice here that Bloomberg is saying that the city has depreciated year to day by 12.42%. So I'm not the one saying it. This is coming from Bloomberg. And you will see the spot and then the change. This is the net change. And that's it. And the percentage is 12.42%. So I'm not the one saying it. This is coming from Bloomberg. Again, our Vice President has lied to us, and it's for all of us to see. And you see that it's called a depreciation of the city year to date, 12.24%. Um, unfortunately, he failed to discuss what is actually happening to the city. He gave a logic that I found to be very irrational and cannot be comprehended with. Um, I'll move on to the next slide and talk about the performance of the currency. You notice that Isaac discussed this, and um, if you were to compare the worst performing currencies and then um, compare the best performing currencies, again, Ghana happens to be the worst in terms of the last four. Uh, if you were to take the Argentinian peso, the Haitian, and then that, that of uh, the Turkish currency, Ghana's currency happens to be the worst in the world, the fourth worst currency in the world, 144 out of 146 currencies monitored by Bloomberg. So I'm not the one saying it. This is an independent entity talking about the performance of our currency. 
I think it's something that we should all be worried about and be paying very attention, much attention to it. I will move on to some of the um, facts, fact versus the lies that I talked about. Again, if you were to read the vice president address, he spoke for about an hour and presented to us about 110 pages of document. I've taken the pain to read through some of the documents, in fact, through the entire document. Unfortunately, he started lying from page three. <laughs> page three, that is when the lies started. And um, um, on the minute, he started lying on the six minute, 15 seconds. So that is when the lies started out of the entire, entire um, one and a half hour speech. So the lies wasn't good. And let me quote from him what he said. He said here, paragraph six, the first lie, I will take you through the rest of the lies. The first lie, he said that the economy ended in 2012 with a fiscal deficit of 12.2% of GDP, 11.7% in 2013, 11.9% in 2014, before falling to 6.7% in 2015, but rose again to 9.3% in 2016. This is the word according to our vice president. But we know data don't lie. According to the Ministry of Finance, again, if the guy can show me, you see that official data from the Ministry of Finance indicated clearly that the overall fiscal deficit, the overall balance, by end of year 2017 was 7.8%, not the 9.3% that the Vice President is talking about. So clearly you've seen the lies there. But what surprises me is that he picked new series of GDP and then for their time, because the denominator obviously is bigger, and pick old series under the NDC to show a negative impression. Even if you were to compare that, you will notice that on the new series, the fiscal deficit we left behind is 6.1% of GDP, new series GDP, and can never be seen as 11.3% of GDP. Even if it's old, it's 78 So I don't know what he's talking about. And what I'm saying is that um, if anyone here doubts me, I've given the link. You can go to http www.ministryoffinance.mofeb.gov.gh forward slash fiscal data. You will see all this information. This is on the Ministry of Finance website. I'm not lying. I've given my source. The government official website. So you can check. Um, please take me to the next page. Take me to the next page. And this, this is really serious. You will notice that this is what the Vice President claims that the fiscal data is. And then this is what the official data from the Ministry of Finance. He claims in the year 2013, we had 11.7% fiscal deficit, but actually the official data says it's 10.1% of GDP as fiscal deficit. If you are to translate this into the new series, it's indeed 7.6%, but not 11.7%. Again, another lie. You come here 2014, he claims that the fiscal deficit was 11.9%. If you are to look at the official data from the Ministry of Finance, and I have the, I have the source here, it says 10.2%. If you are to translate it into new series, it's 7.4%. Another lie. 2015, he's saying it's 6.7%. If you are to look at the Ministry of Finance, official data from the Ministry of Finance, in fact, let me reiterate this point. This data was actually uploaded to the Ministry of Finance website this year by this administration. So I did not upload this statement. It is coming from the government of the day. The, the, he says that 2015, it was 6.7, but it's 6.3. In fact, and the new series is 4.9% of GDP. And then 2016, he went out to say that it's negative, it is 9.3% of GDP. Anytime you see ne negative, then it means it's a deficit. If it's a positive, then it's a surplus. So you see something here, but in this 9.3, he is reporting the actual numbers there is 7.8. But if you were to use the new series, the amount there is 6.1% of GDP. What he did was, in 2017 and 2018, he decided to stick with the numbers there, being the new series numbers, 4.8 and 3.8. So you can see the dishonesty and the lies coming from our vice president. But, but 
I only want to caution His Excellency the Vice President that you cannot be the head of economic management team and decide to lie with fiscal data. Impossible. You can't do that. Because when you are to do that, you are harming the very economy you claim to be the head. You are harming it. No wonder yesterday the city depreciated or moved. Because the market will analyze the slice and see that something is wrong and obviously will react negatively. What this means is that tomorrow, if you are a businessman and you are to go out there to buy something, you will need more dollars than what you used to have before the vice president speaks. So I will uh, urge His Excellency the President to maybe restrain his vice president from talking because anytime he speaks, the currency will move because of the lies. Um, I, will, I will ask him to do that. And then finally, um, um, let me take you to another data. Another data, you heard him yesterday, he disputed the claim that the central bank indeed did not intervene, did not intervene in using our hard-earned foreign currency to show the um, city. Um, unfortunately, that is not the case. He's once again been exposed and it shows that it's a lie. Um, before I take you to the numbers, please show me the next graph. I'll show you the next item. If you see here, you see this is the Bank of Ghana's official data, external sector development, cumulative. And this data is from, I downloaded this from Bank of Ghana as at yesterday. And you can see it from their website. It is still there. In fact, they cannot change it because it will show us distortion. And uh, the best they could do is to, is to shut the website down. But I doubt they will shut the website down. Let me show you something. As of December 2018, December 2018, that's the numbers. What you have there is the net international reserves. So the net international reserves is here, 3.8 billion cities. And you see where we've circled. This January 2019 and December 2019, these numbers actually from 3.8 billion reduced to 3.173 billion. It shows clearly that an amount of 700 million and over was used for the purposes of intervening in the currency. So if he's saying he did not use the money for the purposes of intervention, he should tell, he should tell us where the money is. Unless he tells us in somebody's pocket. But obviously I know they use it for the purposes of intervention. So you can see that data does not lie. He is actually lying to all of us. And um, his credibility is now, has now been brought to question. And finally, finally, um, I talk about the deception. The deception about the 50% and the 30% reductions in the import levies. Unfortunately, um, if you were to listen to him, he created the impression that from today, if you were to go to the port, what is going to happen to you is that the goods that you used to clear yesterday, you are going to get a 50% rebate. And then if you are to clear a vehicle, what you used to pay yesterday, you are to get approximately 30% rebate. In other words, in numerical terms, let me put it this way. If you are to clear a container, 40 footer container of goods, you are to pay 20,000 Ghana cities in the past. If you are to pay 20,000 Ghana cities in the past, from today, you would have paid 10,000 Ghana cities. And then if you are to clear a vehicle, say 100 Ghana cities, you are going to pay 70 Ghana cities. That is not true. Unfortunately, I only wish to caution Ghanaians that please don't celebrate us yet because another abosokai is on the way. Another abosokai deception is on the way. They are lying to us. It is just a populist policy and it will get nowhere. And I, I give you an example. What they intend doing is that they have informed all of us that they are going to reduce the benchmark values. Unfortunately, the benchmark values itself is illegal. The Customs Act 2015, and Your Excellency, you introduced this Customs Act. Your cabinet passed this uh, cabinet, uh, Customs Act. I was really instrumental in taking this to Parliament. And if you are to look at section 67 and 68, it talks about valuation, customs valuation. Section 66 and 67, and particularly 68. 67 talks about the fact that the only option that customs can use for the purposes of valuation is what you call invoice values. 
invoice values, not benchmark values. Customs, uh, the Act in Section 68 introduced exceptions. And the exceptions is where somebody brings in something, and unfortunately, um, Customs thinks that um, they are trying to undercut or launder money into the economy. Then they will apply the, uh, for the purposes of risk management, what is known as Customs Valuation. In other words, data, uh, database values. People call it benchmark valuation. But the benchmark valuation itself, as we speak, it is illegal. The World Trade Organization frowns on it. And again, the World Customs Organization does not accept it. If you are to implement benchmark valuation, they can even sanction you. So this act that your administration introduced outlawed benchmark valuation. So what if customs is actually implementing benchmark valuation now? It is illegal according to Act 891. And somebody can take them to court. What they have done here is that they are telling all of us that indeed this is going to result in a reduction. Unfortunately, it will not result in, 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 in a reduction. Uh, let me give you a scenario. If I'm to bring in an item, goods, worth 100 Ghana cities, and then um, custom says that, let me use a smaller amount so that it be very simple. Um, uh, I bring in a goods that I would say it costs per my invoice is four Ghana cities. And custom says that, no, I disagree with you. The four Ghana cities, the item can be more than the four Ghana cities, but indeed it's six Ghana cities. Customs will now say that they are going to apply six Ghana cities on the item. Now, what customs have done is that, or what this um, policy seeks to do is that they are now saying that six Ghana cities, they are going to give you 50% rebate. The rebate is not on the six Ghana cities, but it's on the difference between the six and then the four. So simply, it's the two that they are going to give you 50% rebate. That rebate will mean that they are going to apply the charges uh, being the, um, the import duties on five, but not six. Or, or on, on five, but not three. His Excellency, the Vice President, is creating impressions that that is going to be applied on three. I don't think he understands taxation. And maybe somebody must um, um, point him to the right direction. He does not understand taxation. But I wish to say that per the calculations that we have done, clearly, clearly, this benchmark valuation will not reduce import duties by 50% and 30%. In fact, the impact will be negligible. The impact will be negligible. It will not be substantial. Per my calculation, it will not exceed 5%. It will not exceed 5%. And uh, it is also clear for us to understand that most of the goods that we clear does not, uh, the benchmark values does not apply. From my checks, customs are only, are only applying benchmark valuations on items such as cement. Because they think that people are bringing cement into the economy that is far cheaper than what Gassem is producing. So they apply benchmark valuation looking at um, the trend of the prices of cement. And then they have come to, so it, it will not be that significant. But I will also wish to say that even that 5% that I'm talking about will be eroded as and when the city depreciates. And by the end of the year, um, it won't be 5% positive, but it's going to be negative 15% if the city depreciates by uh, the rate at which it's going. In the other words, what I'm trying to say is that if today you used to pay 20 Ghana cities, and then this um, benchmark valuation policy has reduced your rate by 5%, don't be happy yet. That 5% by June, you will get back to 20%, and by December, you end up paying uh, maybe 25,000. Because clearly, the city is depreciating, and then the customs values are actually indexed to the US dollars. So whatever you bring in, it will be indexed to the US dollars before the percentages will, will be applied to it. So nobody should celebrate as yet. It's another populist policy that is going to, in fact, surprise Ghanaians, and uh, I'm sure Ghanaians will say, Thank you very uh, much.